Hi, it's uh, Tim Richardson here. Uh, you know, at the end of the class, I'm always saying, uh, did you learn something useful and interesting? Well, here's something I want to share with people who are not in the class this semester. So this is for former students and also maybe students in some other sections and also some friends and relatives or whatever about passwords. I'm in the Toronto Star today talking about passwords and in some very tactical, practical ways of making your passwords more secure. So I'm going to do a little screen capture sort of thing where I actually type on the screen uh, little options and this is basically about mnemonic passwords using alphabet letters and substitution of numbers to make your passwords easier to remember and also a little bit more complex. So watch the rest of the video and it'll explain everything. So like I said, I'm in the Toronto Star today and I wanted to do a little voiceover screen capture of this specific article and then add in some additional explanations for you. So the article talks about think your passwords are secure. And it gets to this point here about mixing them up. And it talks about 26 letters in the alphabet. My point was, if your password is simply numbers, you've got a choice of 0 to 9, which is 10 different combinations. So if your password was three digits, the possible combinations would be 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. But if you added in alphabet letters, there are 26 letters in the alphabet. So for the first option, you'd have 26 plus 10, which equals 36. So you'd have then 36 times 36 times 36 for a three-digit PIN number. So 36 times 36 times 36 is a lot bigger number than 10 times 10 times 10. And one of the fundamental principles of password security is you make it more difficult for the person to be able to figure out your password by making it a larger number that they have to guess from. The larger the number, the more time consuming it is to figure out what the actual password is. And the point I made to the person writing the article was that if you use a combination of uppercase and lowercase, then you go from 26 to 52. So it's 52 plus 10, which is 62, not 61 because she didn't count zero. Uh, so you've got 62 times 62 times 62, which is a very, very large number. So here's what I mean. So I just opened Notepad here as an example. So normally a password might be, say, 3, 4, 5. Or another combination may be 6, sorry, 5, 8, 9. If you wanted to guess that password, you'd have to run everything from 5, 8, 8 to... 5, 8, 9, 2, etc., etc. So basically it's 10 times 10 times 10 for the possible combinations in a three-digit password. But if you add in alphabet numbers, so you're then thinking about, say, 5F9, it would be 10 plus 26, which is 36, times 36, times 36. And again, if you use uppercase and lowercase, now you're talking about 26 times 2, which is 52, plus 10. So you've got 62 times 62 times 62. So as you can see, 62 times 62 times 62 equals 238,000 possible combinations, which is certainly bigger than 10 times 10 times 10, which is only 1,000. So that's one of the fundamental principles of security, is that you just make your risky situation more and more difficult to penetrate. All right, the second part of the article talks about using passwords with slight alterations. So what I mean by that is, instead of trying to remember m completely different passwords for every different account, you can use some parts of it which are the same. So here's what I mean. Okay, let's go to Notepad again. Now. Uh, 602 was a number of my uh, floor in residence at uh, fifth floor, uh, sixth floor block at, Brock at uh, Queen's University. So I'll never forget 602. So I'm going to use that as the base. R for Royal Bank. And then I'm just going to go 001. So my password for Royal Bank is R602001. My password for Scotia Bank is R602001. My password for TELUS is T. 602001. Now, that means I don't have to remember a separate password. I just have to put the identifier at the beginning, and then I've got these numbers here to remember constantly, right? Now, the reason for the 001, sometimes they force you to change your password once a month. So what I do the next fo following month is R602002. R602003, etc. Uh, I think with Royal Bank now I'm up to 
I've done this a uh, couple dozen times, so I think I'm upwards somewhere around with 602033 uh, or something like that. Um, anyhow, that's just one of the ways to be able to help you remember multiple different passwords using that little type of scenario. Now, there's a fourth thing in this uh, article that I wanted to talk about is mnemonic passwords. Uh, mnemonic passwords are passwords where you use uh, numbers which are converted to alphabet letters and then you remember the alphabet letter based on the actual word. So this is what I mean. Okay, so here we have some numbers and we have the alphabet A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So let's say my password was 102. Instead of trying to remember 102, I'd write down BAC. But instead of actually remembering BAC, I write down in the open British Auto Company. And I could write British Auto Company on any document. And nobody would know that British Auto Company stands for uh, numbers, which are 102. Now you can do it a number of different ways. I, I use the first letter, BAC, but you could use the last letter. You could use HO. Uh, so there's other different ways of thinking about that. But this is one of the ways to remember long sequences of numbers is to convert those numbers to alphabet letters and then convert the alphabet letters to words and all you have to do is remember the words. And if the words are in a normal sounding sequence like British Automotive Company or some type of phrase which seems like natural language, that's easier for you to remember. That's what mnemonic passwords are.